Hi, it's Jeff Redding from VidMag Television. We're sitting here um, with Jen Poland from Kiss Me Deadly. Um, been working on this interview for a while. I've been wanting to do this. Um, lately, I'm going to start with this. Over the past few weeks, there's been a lot of focus put on female-fronted local bands, and you know, from Cleveland, going all the way back to the Ponytails and to the Pretenders, through you know, Chrissy Hind and uh, Tracy Chapman and and Rachel Sweet and all those other people. So, as the leader of a female-fronted band, what kind of challenges have you come across? Um, I've, in the beginning, I feel like I had more challenges um, before I like became like more known in the community. But I, I suppose that's a challenge that all musicians face mm -hmm. just getting started. Um, but when I was really unknown, it, it was tough getting people to play with me um, because. Well, first of all, there wasn't many women to choose from. I finally found Madeline in one of the iterations of Kiss Me Deadly, but um, mostly I was always auditioning men, and a lot of times they weren't taking the audition seriously in the beginning before I became kind of known as an actual like musician in Cleveland. And sometimes they were just thinking like it was a date or something, and they weren't taking anything seriously. So that was challenging. Um, I think it's, it's challenging... Um, it's, it's challenging in the beginning before you, you get get your act together, but that's that's always, you know. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, you know, right now there there are a lot of really great female front of bands coming out of Cleveland. We've got Sly Vixen with Kennedy Nagel, we've got you, we've got Duo Decibel System with Melanie. I don't know if I say female fronted because her and John are, you know, uh, who is in your band too, John Scully, the drummer. Um, and then we got Rachel Short in the Underwoods, um, Grace Blackford, and Ricardo Morales. Um, so there's a lot. Mary Martin, who played last night at the Bob Stop. Megan Stepka. Meg Stepka, Stepka and her new band, Moon Echo Garden. So yeah, there's a ton of great super babes with Bridget from the Bob Stop. Um, just a ton of female-fronted bands coming out of Cleveland right now that are that are really like, I think I'm the verge of being able to, you know, get noticed. I hope so. You know, it's really funny. One of my favorite. Um, festivals that I actually, several, and there were three festivals we attended uh, two years ago in Pittsburgh, and um, we were, I had advertised myself as a female front of band, and they booked us, and they loved us, they booked us for all like three festivals of that year, and then at the end they said, oh by the way, um, we weren't really supposed to book you because you're from Cleveland and not a local band, but we did because we didn't have enough female front of bands. So it's interesting because like when you're in an environment like Cleveland and you see, you know, I support all the female front of bands. Um, and I, I really like to support women. I mean, I like all music, but it's nice to see other women out there oh, and sure. I have an, an, a natural connectivity with that. Um, it's interesting to know that that might not be happening in other cities with other music scenes. As it, as it turned out, it wasn't happening in Pittsburgh, and that's why I snuck in, and then they realized we were from Cleveland. And, and I, I actually I find that interesting because musically, Pittsburgh is very much like Cleveland. I mean, you know, it comes from that Rust Belt mentality, that kind of, you know, blue collar, rock and roll sort of thing. I'm really surprised there aren't that many from in front of bands coming out of there. I was too. That's how we were accepted. And then the next year they were like, the woman who had put us in there was like, oh, they found out you're from Cleveland and I can't have you in there anymore. I had you in there because you were a female front of band and we didn't have very many. So, what I'm, but it, even though it seems like, oh, we're both Rust Belt cities, something like having a support system and, and, a, and a vibe and a groove and just like an energy building behind female front of bands, that doesn't happen in every city. Mm. So, um, how long have you been doing this? 15 years. 15 years. Okay, and there have been a few iterations of Kiss Me Deadly. Yes. Um, this particular version has been around for how long now? A year. Well, I mean, it's been around, so the, the, the saxophone edition and keyboard edition has been around for like six years. Um, but, like, adding an extra guitarist to the mix was just last year. Okay, and then how long has Scully been around? He's been with us for on and off for. He's a very busy drummer. Oh right? yes, he been, uh, yes he is. He's been off with <laughs> he's us. He's got he's got his slow burn jazz thing. Yeah. He's got do a decibel system. He's got kiss me deadly, and uh, occasionally puts some drum tracks on some other things. Yeah, he's like with Anita. One that I did. Anita Keys and friends. Too. Oh yeah, well yeah okay. And speaking of which, okay, so the first time I saw Kiss Me Deadly was at your Halloween party <laughs> with Do a Decibel System, who is who I came to see that night, mm -hmm. and Anita Keys and Ryan. 
Um, and speaking of female fronted, again, Anita Keys, I totally forgot about her. Um, so you do that Halloween show every year. How long have you been doing that? So last year was the 10th annual. Oh, wow. Yep. And so I'm, I'm hoping to do it again this year. So one year we did a 666 Witchy Women, and I put six bands with women in it. Uh, it was tough to run all six in one night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody gets like half an hour and use yeah. the same equipment setups and things. Yeah. And just plug Michelle a guitar. Michelle Gaw had her band going at that time. So, so um, what, uh, you know, it, it, it's like it seems like. I, I end up getting drawn most to bands that you can't pick it up. And you're another one. I mean, you're not a rock and roll band, you're not a punk band, you're not an alternative band, but you've got all of those kind of aspects in your music. Um, Joe Despel's system is unclassifiable. Moon Echo Garden is unclassifiable. You know, it's like, um, these are the bands that I think I, I keep getting drawn to because they're more unique. They don't sound like all the other bands that are out there. So how do you keep that going from, you know? Um, well, I mean, I am the songwriter of the group. So I come up, I, you know, I have influences from growing up and they're all just kind of melded into me. And then um, the people that I play with have their own influences that are melded into them. And then it all just kind of comes together and is whatever kind of new melting goo <laughs> it is, you know? <laughs> um, do you, do you have one album. I do, yeah, we're working on our second album right now. Okay, and that's available on the streaming services? The Yeah, the first album, What You Do in the Dark, is available. That was with Madeline Hayes as singer and drumming on there. Um, <clears throat> that was produced by Kings with Records and um, engineered by Chris Keffer. So that was ah, really good. Ah, yeah, so, yes. Very really good record. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Chris, you know, I you can almost always tell when something is done in Magnetic Mars mm -hmm. that Chris has done, you know, had his fingers in the mix because his stuff is so pristine and this goes back to the days when he used to have his studio down in the basement of his mother's house and, right you know i'd go down there and everything and watch somebody record or whatever and then you hear the result afterwards it's like damn those highs are high and the lows are low and i mean yeah you can't go wrong with chris producing right. a record he's a good engineer and producer i mean his idea is like that kind of push the song into another level it's really great mm -hmm. so I, are you gonna are you using him again for no the next i one? no i am um, I teach at Ohio University, and um, last semester I taught um, recording and production, um, music recording and production, and um, I've been using the studio down there. So I had all the guys come down and we did some basic tracks, and we're kind of fleshing out the rest of it now. So it makes it kind of, if, if you're down there, well obviously in summer there's no school going on, yeah. there, but if you're down there, that doesn't leave you much time up here to be able to... A lot of practicing, and I can't see you going back and forth completing the Athens like every week or whatever. I, I do almost every week. Really? Yeah. Yep. Uh, John Scully calls me geographically undesirable, <laughs> which I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Akron is one thing. Yeah. Athens, I mean, you know, you go south of Columbus, you're starting to really get into <laughs> getting some distance going. So, um, so how? Um, how do you take your influences and put them into songs so that each song is has a different kind of flavor to it? Um, okay, so basically I kind of will go like, hey, you know what, I want to write a reggae song, and then I'll write one. Um, um, you know, and I'll listen to like some examples, and I'll be like, okay, let me see if I can tackle that, and then sometimes I'll be like, okay, well, I want to, I want to do a surf rock song. I want to do. Uh, Bossa Nova vibe. I want to do, you know, I'll sometimes I'll start that way. Sometimes it's just like this song emerges and it just ends up going into a direction. Like a song emerged called Tomorrow, and the band just took it into a dub reggae. Like, <laughs> like okay, <laughs> if that's where it's gonna go, that's where it's gonna go. That's cool. The band, this current form of the band, loves to play reggae. <laughs> I don't know. What it is. I, I think it's probably John back there because, yeah. you know, they, I, I can definitely see him doing a reggae beat. He's I mean, really good at ska. I, I, can, I, I can imagine. Um, you know, it's funny because um, I have practically his whole career on film. Um, the first time I caught him, and I didn't know this until just recently, was when I shot Starvation Army, like way back in 86 at this little field house in, in Willoughby. They had like a little park and rec center and stuff and they had a show book that was Pink Hole Starvation Army Offbeats 
um, 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 plague, and I think acid for breakfast, too, I didn't get video of. But I got the other four, Bill DiGidio, who went on to form the definitions of plague and ever a plague, and um, and John was on drums in the First Starvation Army. And then for the um, uh, Klee Magazine showcases that Jim Ellis did back in, in the mid-90s, um, one of the bands that John was in played on one of those. I don't remember which one. I think it was Einstein's Secret Orchestra, maybe. Um, or that might have been Melanie, because she was in one of those bands, too, back then when he was doing that. And then now, of course, he's got to do a decibel system with you guys, and it's, I guess that's slow down. So, um, so where where do you where do you see Kiss Me Deadly going uh, in, in, the, in the near future? Expand, you planning on expanding out, touring? <clears throat> yeah, well, we've always done like these what we call well, I call them I call them spoke. After we did our international tour, we thought it might be a good idea to do what I call spoke tours, which is like a couple shots out like a weekend. So like we'll do we'll do like um, Pittsburgh and like, Pittsburgh on Friday and Buffalo on Saturday and like come back. And we'll do these little, like, tiny little... Because Cleveland's kind of close to a lot of different cities. Yeah, it's like three hours away from just about everywhere. Right. Like Detroit, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Columbus. They're all, like, within the same distance. Right. So, basically, we're, you know, we, we're doing some of that to foster our relationships. We have a good relationship with the Tudor Lounge in Buffalo. And, and uh, we have um, Wooly Bullies in, um, outside of Pittsburgh that we kind of have nurtured a relationship with. Um, we, I have now places in um, Athens that we played. And so, we sometimes stop in Columbus on the way. And so we're just kind of doing these little shootouts, and um, that's going to become more um, frequent once we have a record to kind of move Promote to, this, and, yeah. Yeah, to everybody. So once that gets done, we're going to really be moving that a lot more. And right now we're, we have a lot of shows, summer shows, festival shows. We're playing Liquid Arts Fest, and um, we're playing... Um, by, the, by the library? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we're playing uh, Cleveland Flea. Uh, is it called Cleveland Flea? Something Flea. Um, over but it's in North Olmstead. And then um, the big thing we're playing, which I'm really excited about, is <clears throat> we're playing Fall Bad Fish um, in September at Nelson's Legends. Oh, wow. So that's going to be a pretty big show. Yeah, yeah, that will be a big show. You know, the one probably going to be like the last festival of the year or something. Yeah. And it, it definitely will be packed. I can see why you'd be excited about that. I've never seen a show at, at, at Nelson's. Oh, wow. I've been out there because. My best friend who died a number of years ago was into racing like I am, and he used to go out to the racetrack out Thompson's there. Thompson's racetrack? No, no, to the, uh, Nelson Legends racetrack. Okay. And it's a road course out there, and he would help set the cars on the grid to get started and everything. So that's the closest I've ever been to Nelson's. But uh, but yeah, no, that's gonna be that's gonna be a really great show, I think. So. And our next gig is um, actually in Athens. It's Brewfest, Ohio Brewfest. Um, it's the it's a whole week long, but we're playing on the Friday, um, July nineteenth. That's our next show. So. Oh, that should be packed. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Friday beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and live music. I think those go together really, really well. Yep. So um, okay, well, um, I I think that pretty much covers it. Um, I you know appreciate you you being here and and you know doing this. I, I love doing these interviews here because you know we get to showcase Cleveland and all the beauty that we got. It is beautiful. <clears throat> it is funny. I didn't quite mention this, but um, like when you were saying like we have a sound you can't peg down. Well, I I got tired of like trying to figure out what to say. You know, mm -hmm. this what we sound like this and like this and like this. So um, I just call us uh, retro fresh uh, funk pop. Retro fresh funk pop. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Maybe we can start a new genre right, and get yeah. some other people in there too. The idea is like retro fresh. You know, I'm taking, I'm taking uh, influences. I don't know. You know, you think you absorb them and you don't even know where you got them. Yeah, part. right. You're like, oh, I remember it was exactly this part was Elvis and this part was yeah um, Blondie and this part was Gwen Stefani. Like I can't. Sure. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and especially if, you know, like, you're getting your influences from, like, again, the female-fronted bands mm -hmm. and everything, you know, there's a whole, a whole lot of different, there's different styles mm -hmm. there that, that work out. So anyway, yes, Jen Poling, Kiss Me Deadly, uh, check them out on Spotify, find them on uh, social media. you have a website? www.kissmedeadlyband.com. All of our shows are on there for the summer. We are already booking into November, I think. So there's shows available, uh, whether you're 
in Athens or uh, in, in Cleveland and kind of in between. We got shows all over the place, so check it out. All right, cool. Jen, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you and cheers. <laughs>